Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a first look at the brand new TK Magic Mixer. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm thrilled to present a first look at the TK Magic Mixer, a remarkable Photoshop plugin. The TK Magic Mixer is available in Tony Kuiper's web store, and I'll have a link in the description below this video that will take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store and you can pick up your TK Magic Mixer. What is the TK Magic Mixer and what can it do for me? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. The Magic Mixer was initially designed to help you create black and white images. And it can also be helpful when working with color images, but I'll save that for another video. Today, we're going to center in on creating a black and white image. Let's take a look at the Magic Mixer. We have a plus button here. When you click this plus button, you will add a Magic Mixer layer and you will see you've created a black and white image, but it doesn't stop here. The next button over, which is the eye, if you click it, it shuts the Magic Mixer layer off. And if you click it again, it turns that layer back on. Now that works with any layer in Photoshop. If you're on a different Photoshop layer and click the eye, it'll turn that layer on and off as well. And then next we have this button, which is the randomize button. And this is the button that really makes the Magic Mixer magical because it lets you randomly go through different black and white looks to see what you like the best. And let me show you. Let me click this button. Notice how the image changes. I'll click it again. And every time you click it, you're going to get a different black and white look. A lot of times when you're doing black and white, you're not sure which direction you want to take the image, but the randomize button will help you to get there. But it doesn't stop there. We also have these sliders here. Now notice something. Next to the Magic Mixer, I have my Properties panel opened in Photoshop, and the Magic Mixer is basically controlling the Channel Mixer in Photoshop. Now, the Channel Mixer has always been a great tool for making black and white conversions. I would say it's one of Photoshop's hardest adjustments to try to use. If you've ever tried to use the Channel Mixer, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but the Magic Mixer takes all the guesswork out of this for you because as i said the magic mixer controls photoshop's channel mixer now let's turn our attention to the magic mixer sliders here cyan red magenta green and yellow blue and they're all adjustable but notice they look different than the channel mixer right now we can change that if you come up here to this fly out menu or hamburger menu whatever you like to call it if you click on this you'll notice use channel mixer sliders just click on that and now they represent these sliders over here however i think it makes much more sense to use the other version of sliders by unchecking use channel mixer sliders because this is nice because we have cyan red in other words if i move this slider to the right any color of this image that was red will get lighter or if i move it to the left it'll get darker and cyans will get lighter same here with green. Anything that was green, if I move it to the right, green tones will get lighter. Or if I move it to the left, they'll get darker. Magenta tones will start to get lighter. Or if a magenta tone is too light, I can move this to the right and make it darker. And also, we have yellow and blue. And the same thing holds true here. If I move this slider to the right, blues get lighter. To the left, blues get darker. But then yellows, as I move this to the left, yellows would get a little bit lighter. Or if I move this to the right, yellows would get a little bit darker. But that's how it works. So you have the randomizer. You can adjust the sliders here. And then what are these buttons here? I love these buttons. These buttons deal with the basic color channels in Photoshop, red, green, and blue. But also, we have cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, these are analogous complementary channels to red, green, and blue made possible by the TK Magic Mixer. It's all part of the magic of the magic mixer. Let's give them a try and see what they do. Now, remember, I'm trying to find a black and white conversion that I can really enjoy. So let me click the red channel and see what the image looks like. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Here's what the green channel would look like. Now I'll click on the blue. There's the blue. Here's cyan. And now magenta. And now let's try yellow. I'm getting excited. I don't know about you, but I like high contrast black and white images and that looks really good. Now we may be clipping. I may have the light areas too hot here, but the magic mixer has you covered. You see this button right here? This is called live clipping. If I click on this, 
you'll notice anytime you see blue, that is clipped shadows, and anytime you see red, that is clipped highlights. I don't mind so much clipping my shadows because a lot of times I like really dark shadows, but I am clipping those highlights, and that's not good. If I click this eye, we can see the original image, and there's some yellows in here, right? So let me go ahead and click the eye again and see the image again. And now what I can do is see the yellow blue slider. If I drag this to the right, I'll start making these light tones not quite as light. So let's start to move it to the right. And by the way, you can just like click. You don't have to like click and drag. You can just click on this line and move that over. You see that? Maybe a smidge more. And I've got rid of my highlight clipping. Now, we still have a little bit of shadow clipping, but I don't mind. Now, I wish these darker tones were a little bit darker here, but the Magic Mixer has you covered. Now, to shut off the clipping layer, just click this button again, and it shuts it off. Now, what if I wanted these areas to go a little darker? Because if I click my eye and shut this layer off, you can see these are blue. So let me turn the Magic Mixer back on by clicking on the eye, or you could click this eye on Photoshop's layer as well. It does the same thing. And now I want to turn your attention to this button right here. And by the way, if you hold your Option or Alt key down and hover over any button, you'll get information about what all of the different buttons do for you. So isn't that nice? You have instant access for information about each one of the buttons and sliders. And then just click the X to shut that information off. But this button right here, if I click it, you'll notice I get this new Photoshop adjustment layer called Color Loom. Now, what this does, this lets us work with the colors of the image and make them lighter or darker. So I know this area is blue. So if I take this blue slider and drag it to the left, see how I can darken that blue up just a little bit? And then I can also come to the yellows and maybe drag this to the right a little bit to make those just a little bit lighter. And we can always come and click on our live clipping button just to see. Yes, I got a little bit of clipping there, so I gotta be careful. I'm gonna pull this back. And there, I've got rid of the highlight clipping. I don't care about the shadow clipping. And then click this button to remove the live clipping layer. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I do black and white images, sometimes I like to add some toning to them, and the Magic Mixer has you covered here as well. You see this button right here? If we click on it, we notice we have a sepia tone on the image. And notice this is a hue saturation adjustment layer with color eyes checked on. And then we can adjust that saturation. If that's too strong of a color for you, you could drag this to the left and reduce that. And now I have a nice sepia tone on there. Or you could also take the hue slider here and drag this through the different hues and maybe find a hue that you really enjoy. You know, more like a cyanotype or something like that. Now, you'll notice I'm on the hue saturation layer. I can click this eye and shut that off and click it again and turn it back on. So that eye, as I said, works for any Photoshop layer. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off for now because I like this pure black and white image. I really like the way this turned out. Now we can continue to work on it, adjusting our sliders and adding different Photoshop layers to it, whatever we want to do. But let's say we're happy with this for now. Let me give you one more example, and I have a few more buttons to go over here. Let's try the Magic Mixer on a person. So let's go and click the plus to add a Magic Mixer layer. Let's click through random a few times and see what we get. And I like that one there. But you might say, David, you're clicking through here. How do I get back? Well, we have these two buttons to allow us to go forward or reverse in our looks. We could go backwards if I click this button, and we could go through the different looks to find one that maybe we liked. Okay, and then I could go forward as well. So these are very helpful, and I like this one. I'll stop here. Now let's say I really like this. I want to save this as a preset. Well, we can save out presets. You see this button right here? If we click this button, we can add a preset by clicking the plus. So click the plus and give it a name. I'll just call this one person for lack of a better title and I'll click OK. So there's that preset. Now to remove a preset, I have this preset called test. I'll click on it and all you need to do is click the minus and this message comes up. Are you sure you want to delete this? I just click OK and it's gone. I have different presets here like Gorilla Black and White Conversion. I could click that and see what that looks like. Here's Architecture 1, Architecture 2. Here's the person preset, the one I just made. So we'll just leave it there because that's what I like. And then when you click the X, you'll get out of the presets. If you added presets to the Magic Mixer, come up to the Flyout menu and give that a click.
and then click backup user data and you could store those presets on your computer and there's also a restore here to restore presets just in case something would ever happen it's a good idea to back up your presets if you want to reset the magic mixer you can click this button to reset it back to where it was when you first opened it up like that now don't forget i made a preset of the adjustment I like so I can click on my preset button and click on person and I got that back and click the X and two final things I want to show you and that is a brightness slider and a contrast slider obviously if I move the brightness slider to the right I'll lighten the image if I move it to the left I'll darken the image now notice this brightness number 91 corresponds to the channel mixers number of 91 now that'll stay at 91 even if you move any of these sliders so that's important but the default setting is 100 and that's where I recommend that you start but if you need to darken move it to the left light move it to the right and then contrast if you take this contrast slider and drag it to the right you add contrast and notice these sliders move with it okay and then wherever you move it to whenever you click the randomize button or move any of the sliders here the sliders will be wider apart and so the adjustments will be more intense actually I like this right here so I'm gonna leave it here and don't forget, you always have this button if you want to like fine tune the image. So let's click it. I'll do one final thing here. And I know her sweater is red. So if I want to lighten it up a little bit, I can take the slider and drag it to the right a little bit. You see that and just lighten that sweater up. I like to use the color loom layer for like fine tuning what I've set the magic mixer to. But there you go. That is the magic mixer. And it's great for black and white, but you can also use it for color when you click this button right here, but I'll save that for another video. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the TK Magic Mixer. I love the TK Magic Mixer. If you enjoyed today's first look video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.